Hello everyone and thank you for joining today. I am Roxanne Vogel. I work at Goo Energy Labs as the Nutrition and Performance Research Manager, which is a fancy way of saying I get to do all the fun science things and work with athletes on their nutrition and fueling plans. Today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the do's and don'ts of marathon and half marathon fueling for the TCS Toronto Waterfront Marathon. So this is part of the Women's Training Group series and as a runner and as a woman myself, I'm very excited to join you all today. So tip number one, avoid the bonk. When it comes to fueling a marathon or half marathon, most of us realize that carbs are queen. So you have stores of carbohydrates in your body, but those are very finite, maybe about 2000 calories worth, whereas it takes about 2,500 calories to run a full marathon. So at some point you're gonna run out of fuel you'll start to get fatigued and you might have to slow down or stop. And that's called hitting the wall or bonking. And nobody wants that. So the strategy to avoid hitting the wall or bonking is to consume adequate carbohydrates before and during your race. That brings us to tip number two, don't underfuel. It's really easy to underestimate the number of calories you need to both train for and compete in a marathon or half marathon. And many of us head right out the door without even having breakfast. I strongly encourage you to put something in the tank before you head out the door, whether it's a banana, some sports drink, some oatmeal, just something little to get you going. Women in particular are very sensitive to low carbohydrate availability. So make sure that even if you're getting enough calories, that you're making high carbohydrate choices before, during, and after your training and long runs. The consequences of not getting enough carbohydrates can include symptoms such as fatigue, reduced performance, and a reduced ability to recover from training. Women in particular are very sensitive to low carbohydrate availability. So make sure that even if you're getting enough calories, that you're making high carbohydrate choices before, during, and after your training and long runs. The consequences of not getting enough carbohydrates can include symptoms such as fatigue, reduced performance, and a reduced ability to recover from training. Tip number three is to fuel early and often. When running a marathon distance, you wanna be sure to try to get 30 to 60 grams of carbohydrates per hour of activity. Most energy gels, like our Goo Energy Gels, contain about 20 to 25 grams per packet. So you'll wanna do about two to three gels per hour. But it doesn't have to just be gels. Nutrition or carbohydrates can come from many sources, including chews, sports drinks, bars, whatever suits your fancy. The most important thing when choosing what you're gonna consume during the race is to find what you enjoy and something that you don't mind taking in every 20 to 30 minutes. Find out in training which form factors, such as gels, chews, or drinks, and which flavors even you like the best so that you can practice with them well in advance of race day, so there are no surprises. Which brings me to tip number four. Don't try anything new on race day. It seems common sense, but you wouldn't run in a new pair of shoes race day, would you? Well, neither should you try some new fancy product or some kind of drink you've never tried before. If you're curious what's gonna be on the course, check out the website. Goo gels are gonna be on there as well as some hydration beverages. You can even pick those up in advance and practice with those. Tip number five is to have a plan. Aid stations are your best friends, so know where they are on course and know what they'll provide. On the TCS Waterfront Marathon course, there'll be aid stations about every three kilometers and gels at 12 and 28 kilometers. So know where you can expect to pick up gels, where you might have to carry them, so on and so forth. That also means knowing how often you should be taking in fluids and calories. Set a reminder on your watch for every 20 to 30 minutes if you need to. Remember, the best strategy is to sip and nibble your way through the race. Finally, also have a plan for what you're gonna eat before the race, and that includes the night before. Know what foods sit well with your system, bring them with you if you're staying in a hotel, or plan in advance where you're gonna to go to eat at a restaurant, which may mean getting a reservation if you need to. And then also make sure that you have a plan for what you're going to do for breakfast the morning of the race. Tip number six is don't get dehydrated. Try to plan your hydration timing so that it coincides with your fueling. So if you're taking a gel, try washing it down with a few sips or gulps of water. This not only will help you stay hydrated, but it will also help you absorb those nutrients better and avoid any GI issues. Make sure that as you're going through the aid stations, you either slow down or walk enough so that you can grab a cup, pinch it, pour it in your mouth and don't lose most of it on the ground. Everyone's a little different when it comes to their hydration needs. So best rule of thumb is to make sure that you're neither getting overly thirsty or dry mouth, 
and that you're also not getting a sloshy feeling in your stomach, which means you might have drank too much. Last tip, number seven, do practice your race nutrition strategy. I can't stress this enough. That means practice during training, the night before long runs, what kinds of meals and carbohydrates are gonna set you up for success the next day. Make sure about half of your plate is being filled with starchy carbohydrates and veggies so that you're starting well topped off with your glycogen stores full. Remember that instead of trying to jam all the carbs in the night before the race, think about carb loading over the two to three days before the race. So that just means upping your carb intake slightly, so adding about a fist size extra worth of carbohydrate to your plate than your normal meals. And again, this is a great time to practice your pre-race breakfast. So make sure that it's something high in carbohydrate, lower in protein and fat, and also fiber so that it's not gonna be sitting with you after you start the race. Some good examples might include toast with jam, some banana, oatmeal, tea or coffee if you're a drinker, um, even some juice or sports drink. And keep in mind that you're gonna be at the start line an hour before the race starts. So you may wanna bring a gel or some kind of snack with you so that you can top off 30 to 15 minutes before the gun goes off. The other benefit of practicing your race day nutrition is that you actually train the gut to accept and tolerate more carbohydrate which means that on race day, if you've been practicing all along, your gut is gonna be more likely to accept those calories, fluids, and carbohydrates and not cause GI distress. Finally, if you are a caffeine drinker, as am I, make sure that you practice your caffeine intake strategy or whatever you plan to do for the race. This might mean you have your normal cup of coffee an hour or two before the gun goes off, and that's totally fine, most people do that. That also might mean you're taking caffeinated products during the race. So some gels have caffeine, some don't. Make sure you know which do and which don't, especially if you're sensitive to caffeine. At the end of the day, the most important thing to remember is that we're here to have fun, run a race, have a great day, enjoy the scenery and each other's company. And nutrition can make it so much better if it's done right and slightly worse if it's not perfect. So. Do your best to practice your nutrition during your last few weeks of training. Make sure that you're practicing trying to eat or drink something every 20 to 30 minutes, targeting that 30 to 60 grams of carbohydrate or two to three gels worth of carbohydrate per hour. Everybody, thank you so much for joining. I hope you have a great race and hope to see you out there on the road soon.